news from Diggerland. I dropped dead in qualifying, so I've been forced to sit out this competition, which gives me a little time off to work on my golf game. Four. Whoa! For the ride of your life. I'm Luann Lee, and this is the U.S. Hot Rod Association's Monster Wars. If you want some high-flying action, you've come to the right place. Regular viewers already know what's in store for them today. The hottest, most exciting hour on television. The Minneapolis Metrodome has been home to some awesome sporting spectacles, so why wouldn't we be here with Monster Wars? They have the Minnesota Twins here. They have the Minnesota Vikings here. They've had the college basketball Final Four here, and of course, they've had the Super Bowl here. But right now, it's all of the baddest monster trucks here to do battle in Minneapolis. I'm going to be back here in the pits bringing you all the action from behind the scenes. And our man with the play-by-play -play call, of course, is Joe Lowe. Thanks, Jim. This crowd has already been treated to a show. You know, normally we don't show you qualifying here on Monster Wars. We get right to the racing. But a lot of action has happened on this very, very tough course already here in qualifying. Digger being towed off the track. This is after his qualifying run. What happened? Here it is. Off the line, he comes over the cars. Very nicely lands, speeds up, and then launches. And watch this landing. Boom! The rear end comes out of the truck. Totally everything's ripped out. And Digger is on the ground. Pieces. There's pieces of Digger everywhere. He will not be back to race today. He wasn't the only one that had a tough time. The world champion Fred Schaefer takes barefoot over the cars. And now his launch. Look at that. 25 feet in the air. And his landing sideways all over the place. Now, Taurus comes up. He's, oh my gosh, defying gravity on that one. Equalizer had an equally bad run. And Tropical Thunder's up in the air. Everybody having problems. Wayne Smolzanek does a great job of driving. Kodiak took it easy over the cars. Let's see if his strategy works. There goes the front drive shaft. Nope, he has problems too. After working frantically in the pits, Kodiak is somewhat repaired. No front wheel drive, but he's out to face Predator and Alan Pizzo. And the question is, can Kodiak defeat the Predator? Welcome to the dome, Kodiak. And look who just came in the cab door. Wow! Having a little difficulty getting your engine running for our little showdown? Well, you better be 100 percent sure if you want a fighting chance of catching me. Ah, come on. You might wonder how these mighty monsters can get any kind of traction at all and stay on a track with those bumpy rides. They do it with the help of Custer coilover shocks. Alan Pizzo's Predator was fifth in qualifying today. Those Custers helped him out. Kodiak was ninth. Mark Bendler aboard there. He had to work just to get the truck back for round one. Now Predator out in front as we expected. He has no problems at all defeating Kodiak. Kodiak runner with a rear drive only. Predator, 6.5 seconds on the track. Your winner of race number one is Predator. Well, that was a lame performance. Try leaping over the cars like a cat next time instead of crawling over them like a, a rug rat. You'll see the finish line a lot sooner, huh? Well, now you might as well go off to the woods and lick your wounds. And don't show your snout around here again until you can give me a good fight. Come on! Ah! Because of the Gravedigger accident, Barefoot got a bye run, and he automatically moved on to the second round. And now, Predator, with Kodiak really offering no resistance, moves on. So it will be Predator and Barefoot in round number two. Hey, Alan, nice first round run against Kodiak. You put him away. Tell me about that run. Well, you know, I, Kodiak's a good runner all the time. I knew I had to cut a good light, and, you know, I cut a good light, and I was generating a whole lot of, you know, speed between sets of cars, and I backed out just a little bit before I got the cars, keep the truck low. You know, as you're in the air, you don't make no time, so you got to keep it low, and, you know, hopefully you can make a lot of time on the ground. 
And now it's another battle that we have. Tropical Thunder, Wayne Smozanic goes against Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. They've met once this year, and Crusher won that one. Can he do it again? 89, this is my race. 90, nothing can withstand my strength. 91, my will to win. 92, I will destroy him. 93, leave a path of destruction. 94, no, no, no survivors. 96, no exceptions. 97, tropical thunder. 98, welcome to Carolina. 99, your visit will be brief. 500, yeah, yeah. Yeah! They're called Custer Coilover Shocks, valued at $1,500 apiece, folks. That's on Tropical Thunder, the truck driven by Wayne Smozanic. He qualified eighth today. Gary Porter took Carolina Crusher to fourth and qualifying. And now, these two go at it. This course has already taken out Gravedigger. It's really hurt Kodiak. Let's see if these two guys can hold together. Off the line, a wild jump for Tropical Thunder. Carolina Crusher doesn't waste any time in beating him. Look at the lead for Carolina Crusher. Three seconds faster. It was almost as if Tropical Thunder was a spaceship. He launched. You need to contact the FAA before you go flying in here. Carolina Crusher has this one figured out, but it's very close to the wall and stopping. One of the longest indoor tracks we run all year long. Wayne Smozanic took a bad hop. He does not have time to straighten things out, and all he can do is limp across the cars at the finish line. Keeping his cool and getting the win is Carolina Crusher. 7.51. I have the strength of 10 men. 7.52. Nobody can slow me down. 7.53. I am pumped, pumped, and ready for action. 754, this means war! 755, 756, 757, 758, 759, 